Hey everyone, this is Steven Robles, the bearded teacher, and a hot dog is not a sandwich. Today, I'm gonna to be teaching you how you can create an online store and sell your products, whether you have physical products, digital downloads, or services that you'd like to sell. I'm gonna show you how to build that online store in Squarespace. If you've never used Squarespace before, I actually have a video walking you through the steps from the very beginning to create your website. Check out that link above, and you can watch it. There's chapters so you can jump around, and I show you how to create the website, build and layout pages and all that. And also, if you want a podcast with Squarespace, I have a video just on that, and you can check that link above as well. But I'm gonna assume you already have a Squarespace website set up and ready to go, and you just need to create an online store. So we're gonna jump into doing that right now. So here I'm logged into my Squarespace website, and the first thing I'm gonna to go to is the pages here at the top. And this is where you create and edit the pages for your website in Squarespace. And what we need to do is create a page for store. The store page is what you use to sell any kind of product in Squarespace. I can click the plus button either in the main navigation or under the not linked. You can find more information on the differences there in my previous video, but since I'm gonna be working on it right now, I'm gonna put it in the not linked section so it's not publicly visible just yet. When I click that plus icon, you'll see the store page is one of the options to create. And this is Squarespace 7.1, which is the newest version of Squarespace. If you've created your website in the last year, or year and a half, you're probably on this version, but if you're on an older version, it might look a little different, but the process is pretty much the same. Here you're just choosing a layout for the store. You can always change this later, but I'm gonna choose this store one layout and click that. And now you'll see the store page appear in my left sidebar here. You can title this whatever you'd like, maybe online store or arts and crafts or downloads, whatever you'd like to name for your product, or we could just call it store. Now when I click into the store page, it's gonna have some pre-made products here that are not mine, they're just kind of demos. And I'm actually gonna delete these because I wanna start from scratch. So I can, it's giving me some more options here about the page. I can check this box all here on the left of each product and I'm gonna hit delete so I can have a fresh start, totally blank on my website. Now this box is telling you there's some other things we need to do to make our store live. And we'll do that after we've added some products. So to add a product, I'm gonna click this plus button here at the top of the left column. Now it's giving me an option of the kind of product I want to sell. If you're selling anything physical, something you're going to ship to someone, to ship to a buyer, you're gonna sell a physical product. That might be clothes and apparel, it could be gifts, jewelry, necklaces, whatever that physical object is, could be art, that's a physical product. A digital product is a download. Maybe you make wallpaper packs for iPhone. That would be a digital download. Or you have some PDFs or an ebook you want to distribute here on your website. All of those are digital downloads. You can also sell a service, which is not a download or a physical product, but maybe you give tours at your place of business. Maybe you work at a plant or a factory and you want to give tours and people have to pay for them. You can choose a service or if you wanna do ticketing, maybe you wanna sell tickets to a show at your venue, that can also be a service type item. Now there's also something in Squarespace called scheduling, and we won't get to that in this video, but if you have a product or maybe you teach lessons, maybe you do workout classes, Squarespace scheduling is great for that because people can book a time, a specific time a class is going, and actually pay for it in scheduling. That's a little different. We won't go into that in that video. But if you'd like me to teach the Squarespace scheduling as well, drop a comment below this video after you hit the like button, and I'll do a tutorial on that as well. You can also sell gift cards for your products. Again, if you sell services, downloads, or physical products, you can choose to do gift cards. I'm going to choose a physical product for right now, and it's going to talk about there's a new way to edit products if you came from an older version of Squarespace, but I'm gonna hit launch. Now I'm in the product details, and this is where I create my new product. Let's say I'm gonna be selling a t-shirt, and so I'm gonna call this the Bearded Teacher T-shirt. That's the title of the product that everyone will see on the website. The description is a slightly longer paragraph of information about the product. Maybe you wanna say that it's 100% cotton, the best feeling shirt ever, whatever description you'd like there. You can also click this additional info section and add blocks just like any other Squarespace page, whether it's an audio clip, an image gallery, any of these blocks are available to you for every individual product. And that's what you can do in the additional info page. But you don't need to do that, so I'll leave that alone. Images, you would put the image of your product. You can add multiple images here. I'm just gonna upload one of my logos. We have some image for this product. 
Now, inventory is important with physical products because if you want people to buy things but only as much as you have on hand, you need to set an inventory limit. So you can change that, first of all, is the price. Uh, let's say this t-shirt is $25. You can toggle this if you want to make it look like it's on sale. Maybe it's regularly $25, but you want it to be on sale for $15. You can do that. Inventory, again, depending on how you produce and distribute your products, you might want to say unlimited quantity. I want people to be able to buy this product at all times, no matter what. Or if you have a limited stock, you can put that quantity here. Maybe you only have 50 shirts to sell. That means after 50 shirts are bought through your website, the product will be marked out of stock and no one else will be able to buy it until you come back into this product and change that number. Now I'm going to scroll down and you see variants, and this is an important place, especially if you're doing apparel. You'll need to put sizes as a variant. Maybe you have colors as a variant. So here I can add a variant, and this kind of already has some basic variants that you would choose, especially if you're doing clothes. You can also do a custom variant, but I'm going to choose size, and here you would do small, and you can click it as they auto-complete, or you can just press the comma button. And I'll do large comma, X large, and maybe XXL large. And so those will be in a drop down menu that my customers can choose when they come to the product page. You can also add a secondary option like color, and maybe we'll do green and black. I'm going to hit apply. And so now my variants are all there, and you'll see it has 10 variants. It's multiplying the two colors times the five sizes. That's why it's telling you there's 10 variants. You can always go back and edit this later. Advanced shipping, this is something where if you have uh, the higher plans of Squarespace, and I'll go over the plans towards the end of the video, some plans actually automatically calculate shipping costs with UPS or the United States Postal Service, and if you put weight for specific items, it'll use that to calculate later. You can also manually put shipping costs depending on weight. So you could say, if the object is one to two pounds, put this as the shipping cost. I'll show you how to do that in a little bit, but that's the advanced shipping area. Categories and tags are important because if you have many products, you might want your website visitors to browse your products by category, maybe shirts, pants, and hats. Categories will be something you should plan for your visitors to see these on the website visibly, shirts, pants, hats. And so I'm going to add a category, and we'll call it shirts, and I'll add it there. Now tags are a little different. Your customers and visitors to the website most likely won't see tags as an option, but tags is something you can use when you want to display your products around the website, maybe on your home page. Maybe you want to add a tag that's like favorites. And you'll be able to call up all items marked as favorites later around the website. I'll show you that in a moment. You can also choose to make this a featured product, where when you feature products elsewhere around the website, you can choose just to do featured products. You can also choose to do related products. Again, if I have multiple shirts, it'll automatically show related products. And there's some other integrations here like Etsy and such. You can get in there and really customize the SEO and what it looks like when it's shared on social media. I'll leave that alone for right now. And if you want to share this to your social accounts when you publish it. And there's some other options down there. Subscription products are also popular. You can do subscriptions that charge someone every month. Maybe it's for a download. Maybe you ship something to your supporters every month for something. You can do a subscription. I'm going to leave those alone for right now. And I'm going to hit save. And then you can either schedule this item to go live at a later date or save and publish. I'm going to hit save and publish. And now my item will be live. I'm not going to provide any feedback right now. That's just a Squarespace thing. So now if I click my store page, you'll see I have one item here, the Bearded Teacher t-shirt. If I click this item, you'll also see it has that sale tag, which I marked it as on sale. You'll see it has the longer description that I put in that little paragraph, 100% cotton, best feeling shirt ever. You'll see I have these drop downs to select color, green or black, and then I can select the size. And then I can also put quantity. Someone can buy multiple if they would like. And so the product right there is pretty much ready. If that's all I needed. And our buyers or users can hit purchase and buy the shirt. But let's add a couple more products so we can kind of see how these categories and tags work. I'm going to add another product. This one's going to be a physical product. And maybe this is the bearded teacher hat. 
Again, it's the best hat you'll ever wear. You can add images. Again, I'll just put a different uh, logo there so we can look a little different. I'll put this as $15 and I have maybe I have 25 of these hats I can sell. And and for variants, I don't need variants because it's a hat. I just have one size, pretty much fits all. For categories, I'm going to add a new category for hats. I'll just call it hat. And for tags, I'm going to leave that blank for right now. I'm going to hit save and save and publish. And now I have a second item on my store. If I go back to the main store page, you'll see now I have two items. Again, if you have images for your apparel, you'll see those images in place of my logo. Let's add one more product. But this one is going to be a digital download. Maybe I have an ebook that I want to give away, or maybe I want people to buy it. I'm going to do a digital download. For a digital product, you still have product name, so maybe this is the Bearded Teacher ebook. You can add a description, the best book you'll ever read. You can add images, just like we have for the other things. I'll do a slightly different image there. For inventory, because it's a digital product, you don't really have a inventory that you're keeping. It can be downloaded as many times as people buy. But you do want to upload a file. If it's a digital download that they're getting, you need to put the file that they're going to get when they purchase it here. And so you can upload a file. Maybe it's a PDF. Maybe it's multiple things. I'm just going to choose a random image here. You can really put any kind of file there. Audio file, video file, whatever you'd like. One thing to keep in mind with a digital download, depending on people's internet speeds, it might take them a long time to download large files. So try to keep your files less than a gig. You know, if you're doing like wallpapers for a digital device, those should be fine. They're not too big. If you want to have multiple files here as the digital download, I'll show you a little trick here. On a Mac, if you select multiple files on the computer and right click those files, one of the options you have is compress. When you choose that compress option, it'll take those three files and put it into one zip file. If you're on a Windows computer, you can select multiple files, and I believe that the option is just zip or make archive. I'm not exactly sure, but you do have that option on Windows as well. And then you can upload this zip file to this Squarespace, and actually let me do it so you can see it. I'll upload this archive zip file, and now when your customers make a purchase, They'll get an email with a link to download that zip file, and all the multiple files you wanted to include will be there when they unzip it. So that's pretty cool. I'm going to go down, and for categories, I'm going to add one more category and call this Downloads. I'm going to leave the tags blank, and I'm just going to go up to Save, Save, and Publish. So I now have three items here in my online store. Now, a couple of things you'll start to notice. The categories that I've started putting in here are showing up in the left-hand column. Now you can have a couple options here about the categories. If I edit this page, remember this is a store page, I can click this little pencil icon and I get some options here for how I want things to display. Maybe I want my products to be three across. I can change that in the column section here. I can change the aspect ratio of the images that appear here on this main store page. The text alignment, maybe you like text centered under the products. And you can either show or hide the price for each item. So you'll see the prices appear underneath, or I can hide them. And the categories type, you can move it to the top. So if you want your categories above your products, or you can put it in the sidebar on the left. Category title also means I can put, uh, just says store, whatever the name of the page is up there. But I don't need that, so I'm going to hide it. So if you want to show your categories a little differently, you can choose to do that. Once you've added these products and your store is ready to go, I'm going to just save this page and leave it right there. Now, those tags and categories. Let's say you wanted to go to another page on your website and feature some of these products. I'm going to go to my home page here in the navigation. So I'll go to Pages, go to my home page here in the left column. I'm going to go down a little bit. I'm going to hit the Edit button for this page on the website. I'm going to hit this Plus button to add a new block. And I'm going to add a block called a summary block. These blocks are very powerful because they can pull blog posts, products, things from other collections into this block wherever you want on the website. So for instance, I can select a page and I'm going to choose my store page. And now you'll see all the items from my store just appeared on my home page in this block. But then I also have some other options here. 
I can choose what metadata. Maybe I want to show the category that each of these products are. You see downloads, hat, shirts, those appeared. But I can hide those. But what's also cool is I can go over to design. Maybe I want more of just a list of products. You can change the list, carousel, grid, change the image size, aspect ratio of the image. Maybe I want squares, alignment. You can change all this kind of stuff. Maybe I want to hide the price here on the home page. I don't want people to see that. I can hide the little short description if I want. And if you have physical products that you'd like people to view quickly here in these summary blocks, you can enable quick view. And if I had other images attached to these products, it would give people an option to see those. And I can also filter what products appear. And I can also filter what products appear in the summary block. So if I go back to the content tab and go to filter items, I can choose category or tag. Now remember, I only did one product with a tag and I called it favorites. Well, I can go here to tags and you'll see that one tag that I have is listed here. And if I click that, it'll only show the products that I tagged as favorite. You can also choose to show only those featured products. Remember, we had that toggle in the individual items. I can do that toggle and I didn't set any as featured. So now this block is showing nothing. But again, you can choose tags, categories, and featured products. So you can really get granular to say what products you want to appear in these summary blocks around your website. And if maybe you choose featured products only, then you never have to touch this block again. You can just edit your products in the store page and uncheck featured ones, check others as featured, and it will automatically update wherever you have these summary blocks on your website. Pretty cool. I'm gonna delete that block just for now and save this page. So now you have your products ready in your store, but people can't buy things just yet. There's a few more things you need to do to get your online store live. The first thing we're gonna do is go back to the main left column here. And this commerce section is where you're gonna spend the rest of your time getting your online store all set up. Squarespace tells you the things you still have to do, which is good. Now I have a way to get paid already set up, but if you're just doing an online store for the first time, this is probably unchecked for you. And what this means is you actually need to set up a Stripe account. You go to stripe.com. I actually go to that website right now. I'm gonna open a new tab and go to stripe.com. And here it's free to create an account, but you need a Stripe account in order to process credit cards on your website. Most people want others to be able to pay for things with a credit card or debit card. And for that, you need to create a Stripe account. Again, it's free to create the account. You don't spend anything monthly on your Stripe account, but they do take a percentage of every transaction. It's about 2.9% plus 30 cents at the time of this recording. It might change in the future, but that's the amount they take of every transaction processed through Stripe. We don't have time to go through the whole Stripe account setup, but it's pretty self-explanatory. You create an account, you attach it to an, a checking account, you put the tax information, and your Stripe account would be ready to go. Once you have your Stripe account set up, you would go here down to Payments, here in the Commerce section of Squarespace, and there you would connect your Stripe account. You see mine is already connected. It'll just prompt you to log into that Stripe account you just created. You can also connect PayPal if you would like people to be able to pay using their PayPal account directly. And what's really cool is if you have a physical store where you sell products in store and you wanna be able to see those orders and transactions in addition to what comes through online, the Square option is really cool. If you have a point of sale system through Square, you can connect that right here in Squarespace. Then your Square account and Squarespace will talk to each other as far as like order information and things like that, pretty cool. You can also set store currency, which is important. If you don't live in the United States, you can set another country currency and test mode, but we're not testing anything right now. So that's payment processing. You have to do that in order for your online store to be active for people to actually buy things. Then if you have physical products that you're selling, you have to set up shipping. That's the choose how to ship your products. And so if I go here, and just so you know, that I click that in that main screen, but you can also go to the shipping options here under setup. So I can go to shipping and you have to add shipping options. Now here you can choose a flat rate, meaning every order that goes through your website, a flat rate will be charged to the customer. Maybe it's $5, maybe $10. Again, like I showed you before, adding a weight to your products, you can choose to adjust the shipping cost depending on an individual product's weight. And if you pay for more advanced plans in Squarespace, you can choose for automatic calculation via FedEx, UPS, or USPS. The easiest right here is flat rate. 
Now, be very mindful, you don't want to lose money on shipping. So find out how much it actually costs to ship your products, and if people buy multiple products, what that might cost, and add that here. And I would add the option name. This is something that your customers see when they buy something. So for option name, I'm going to do USPS for United States Postal Service. And you'll see there's a per order fee or a per item fee. So maybe you want to make sure to charge $3 per item no matter what. So you make sure you never lose money on shipping. Maybe you want to do $3 in that per item. Or if you're pretty confident that nothing will cost more than $5 to ship or $10 to ship, you can do a per order fee of $5. This way, any shipping item that someone buys, even if they buy multiple items, they'll only be charged $5 per order for shipping. Now, if I go over to shipping zones, here you can limit where you're willing to ship products. If you're only willing to ship products in the United States, you can start typing in United States in the ad country, and you'll see all 54 states and territories are selected. Now, you can edit that by clicking the edit button. Maybe you're not comfortable shipping to Alaska or Hawaii. Maybe there's other places you don't want to ship to. You can actually go as far as adding specific zip codes that you want to be able to ship to or not ship to. You can set these settings here in that shipping option. So I've chose United States, excluding Alaska and Hawaii, and I'm going to hit Save. So now I have at least one shipping option set, and so Squarespace should be good as far as that. Yep, and now you'll see choose how to ship your products is checked. One other thing you have now in the newer versions of Squarespace is you can set pickup options. So if you have a physical store and you want to give someone the option to pick up the item in store, you can actually set up pickup options at a physical location. You put the location, maybe you have multiple stores, like you have store north side, store downtown, store south side. You can name the pickup option location, put the address and the times allowed, and any instructions that they need to pick up their item, like a driver's license. So this didn't used to be an option in Squarespace. Very cool that they have that now. So that's pickup options for physical products. Now there's a lot of other options here in the Squarespace commerce settings. I'm not gonna go through everything. You do wanna maybe think about taxes, if you wanna charge taxes for any or all products, or different tax rates depending on where the customer is buying from. You can adjust that in the taxes. You also have options for reporting, like in the accounting section. And you'll also come back here whenever you need to see the orders that someone has bought things online. You need to see all the orders that have come in across your website. You can always go up to orders and you'll see the different things there. You can filter things there, export a CSV file if you wanna put that in an accounting software you use elsewhere. You can also adjust inventory. It says premium feature, we'll get to that in a moment. But here you can adjust the stock of certain items all in one place, so you don't have to keep going back to that store page to set inventory limits. You can even change prices there, which is nice. And you can even set discounts. This is really cool if you wanna have promo codes. Maybe you're running a holiday special, Valentine's Day special, whatever it might be. You can create a promo code, and you have lots of options here. You can choose what the promo code says, a percentage off, or a dollar amount off, which is nice, or you can offer free shipping. And you can even have it apply to a specific product. You can have it apply to orders over a certain amount or products by category. Maybe you want all your shirts to be able to use this promo code, but not your hats. You can adjust all of that in the discount section of the commerce settings. There's also a lot of other selling tools, customer notifications. This is where you can see what kind of emails your customers will get when they buy a product, and you can adjust some of this email design and the text. Here you can just select the different emails and like the confirmations, order fulfilled, and you could do all that. But finally, if you just want your store to go live, the last thing you need to do is upgrade your Squarespace account if you haven't already. Now to do this, you'll see it says choose a subscription plan here. You can also go over to the main Squarespace settings and then go to billing if you wanna change your plan and the subscriptions here. And if I click change, this is where Squarespace is gonna show you the different plan options that you need to upgrade to in order to sell. And here, this is a big comparison about all the different online stores and such. And you'll find that when we get down to commerce, you see fully integrated e-commerce, that's the feature you need to sell with Squarespace. And you'll see the basic personal plan, which is $16 a month, it's cheaper if you pay for a year at a time, is unchecked. So I cannot sell products with this plan. 
I have to upgrade either to the business or higher commerce features. You'll also see that the transaction fees here uh, apply to all of your products and this transaction fee is for Squarespace, not Stripe. So keep in mind, if you want to go with the lowest plan needed to sell something with Squarespace, you can go with this business plan at $26 a month. But keep in mind, Squarespace is going to take 3% of that transaction and then in addition, Stripe.com is going to take 2.9% plus 30 cents of that transaction as well. If the margins are really small on your products and you need the maximum amount of profit per item, you probably want to go with some of these higher plans where Squarespace does not take anything. Stripe.com is still going to have that transaction fee, but Squarespace won't take anything. Now, all of the Squarespace plans lets you sell unlimited products, so you could have hundreds and hundreds of items for sale. You can do gift cards and even set up donations with some of these higher plans. And then you'll see some of these features start dropping off like point of sale. If you have the physical store, you want to integrate the Square account. That's only available in the higher plans. You get some more analytics. There's also products on Instagram if you want to integrate with some of your social media stuff. Abandoned cart recovery. Now that begins the features just in the advanced commerce plan, which is $54 per month. Subscription items are only in that advanced commerce. The advanced shipping, which includes that auto calculation for FedEx, UPS, and USPS, that's the advanced commerce. And discounts also have more options like promo codes when you have that advanced commerce section. Also, commerce APIs, if you're going to ship a lot of products and you want tracking numbers and labels to be automated for your different orders, you might want to look into some of the integrations that Squarespace has with things like ShipStation or Shippo, S-H-I-P-P-O. I'll put links to those in the description of this video below. Those services actually integrate with Squarespace so shipping labels can be created automatically and tracking numbers can be sent to customers automatically. Now, if you don't opt for those advanced commerce features, you can still send tracking numbers to your customers. When you have an order come in for a physical product, there's an option to mark as fulfilled. And when you do that, you can put the tracking number there and it gets sent to the customer so they can track it. Now, once you upgrade to one of those Squarespace plans that includes commerce features, you're ready to finally set your store live. You can put the link out there. People can buy your products and you can ship it to them. Digital downloads will be available via email for them and services can be sold as well. Again, there's a lot of other little options here in the commerce section. So let me know if you have questions about commerce with Squarespace, maybe in some of those deeper menus here in Squarespace, leave a comment below. I'd love to do another video tutorial on commerce answering your questions there. If you enjoyed this video, if it helped you out, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. I'm going to be doing more tutorials, not just on Squarespace, but other things around the internet. I thought about doing an email campaign tutorial, stuff on Apple devices. Again, let me know what you'd like to hear in comments below. So hit the like, subscribe, do the bell icon, and get all notifications so you don't miss a video. And if you have other questions, you can also tweet at me, at Steven Robles on Twitter. I'm real active on there. I'd love to answer your questions if you have them there as well. Thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you next time.